Hello, and welcome to the show. I'm Martin Willis, your host, and uh, I got to say we have a great one for you this evening. I know uh, everyone out there actually does not have Netflix or access to it, and uh, not everyone that has Netflix has actually watched the uh, most recent version of Unsolved Mysteries, Episode 5, Berkshire's UFO. But I will say this. I very rarely watch anything more than once. And I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I watched that episode three times. And I did because it's it's really an amazing episode. And I, I would say if you have the means to watch it and you haven't watched it, uh, I highly recommend it. And everyone uh, that has watched that, that I've told to watch it, has told me, you know, kind of the same thing. They thought it was fantastic. Well, um, tonight we have Tom Warner. And if you have watched that, uh, he is one of the people featured on it. He was involved in the encounter, uh, very well involved. We're going to be talking about that. And uh, that happened 51 years ago this evening, September 1st, 1969. And uh, his encounter was and is absolutely life-changing. And I'll let him tell the story. Uh, just a couple of things first before I bring them on. I want to thank everyone who listens to the show uh, and whether you can help out or not. Uh, I also want to thank everyone behind the scenes. Uh, Peggy helps out with the Facebook page. Um, Evan helps out with the graphics. Uh, Bill Skywatcher, he's over at KGRA Radio and helps out over there. And not only that, he's also uh, screening the calls when they come in the last half hour of the show. Uh, we have an active Facebook page, and that's at facebook.com slash podcast UFO. And uh, we are simulcast over there. Uh, that's been going for a while. And people can actually message on uh, over there as well. So that's just another way to listen and watch the show. Um, on podcastufo.com, you'll see there is a Patreon link if you'd like to support the show. Um, if you already are supporting it again, thank you for that. There's also a blog over there. And this week is a real interesting one. It's uh, the UFO baptism of James Mosley. Uh, it's such a fascinating story. And Charles is recording audio blogs. So uh, that is free in the uh, in the podcast feeds. And I just started post. I posted the last couple up on uh, Facebook. So that's, that's uh, there. You can uh, check that out now. And uh, so, oh, no, I'm sorry, not on Facebook. It is also on Facebook, yes, but on YouTube, I meant. So just a couple of things about uh, what's coming up. Um, and that is uh, next week, it's going to be a little bit different for people that listen to the live show only. Um, if you're listening to the podcast or on KGRA radio, everything's going to be the same, except it'll be, um, you know, a pre-recorded. But the show will be live on Sunday this coming Sunday, and that's at 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And um, if you like to watch the show live, uh, you know, all you have to do really is uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, click the little bell, and that'll give you uh, a notification of when that show will be uh, every week. So Paul Dean uh, from Australia had to do that to work the schedule uh, for him. So that, again, that'll be next week will be Paul Dean. Sunday, and it'll be out on KGRA radio and everywhere else you listen to this uh, the same time as usual. And without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our guest tonight. Tom, welcome to the show. Well, I thank you, Martin, and, and thank you for all the listeners that are tuning in uh, and to your program here. And I appreciate you giving me the time to uh, tell this unique story of what happened 50 yeah. years ago, 51 years ago. 51 years ago, and just uh, like, a, I'm going to say like in an hour and a half, it's going to be exactly the same time, 51 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> During this show, well, We're right? going to be we looking out the window just in case, because you, you, you never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And I want to say, if it, if it happens to come back when it's on the show, Martin, you know, please make sure that, you know, you get a good footage of me, you know, probably. Disappearing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, it'll be very good, uh, very good video, not so good radio. But uh, anyway, yeah, there should be interesting. Yeah, because you might hear me now. I was, might have been a little braver at, at, at 10 than I would now. You know, it's hard to say. 
I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> so, um, you know, for the person who has not heard this story now, I, I've heard this story for years, but I thought it involved one family, one person. But I, until I watched that episode, I didn't realize how far reaching this thing is. And boy, is it far reaching. Um, things I, I'd like you to talk about because it wasn't just the Berkshires, but, but let's, first of all, let's, let's hear your, your incredible, I have to say, um, because I don't think anyone else has seen what someone saw, what happened to you. Um, so let's just start right from the beginning, if you would. All right. As you know, it was September 1st, 1969. And this, the day was very hot that day. It was well over 90, very high humidity. Uh, it was just an unusual September 1st day. And, you know, like typical things we did, we, we had a creek that was in back of us down in the creek. We'd go swimming and everything. And we fulfilled the whole day. And then towards the end, we had our, you know, I grew up with uh, seven, there were seven of us kids and had dinner. And, and then I said to my mother, I said, mom, can I go next door? I want to go over to Shaw's. I want to do some coloring. And as you know, I'm a watercolor artist, but back then, yeah. you know, my main medium was Crayola 64 crayons, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, so I went over and I went over and knocked on the door. I said, Debbie, uh, I'd, I'd like to, uh, we'll do some coloring. And so we played some games, you know, typical stuff, just, you know, after supper things. And I never even thought of anything, you know? And then I said, come on, let's do coloring. And we started coloring. And, and it was like, just, you know, Debbie was always funny because Debbie would say, Tommy, stay in the lines, stay in the lines, concentrate, stay in the lines, you know? And I'd be like there and I'd be like, really, really concentrating really well, you know? And, and we had music playing. We'd have the 45s back then. You'd stack them up to about, you know, they yay high with the different 45s and stuff. And I one came on and I remember exactly the song it was the wipeout you know it was playing oh yeah you know and so yeah, wipeout was on and that finished and then as the next one dropped down the next one dropped down all of a sudden i had mental telepathy and it was like the weirdest now i've had I, i've said this before i've had mental telepathy back as far as i can possibly remember but this was so strong i mean this was like oh and I got up quick and I went over to the window and Debbie says, are we, are we still coloring? I said, I don't think so. And I said, and she goes, why is your mother calling you? I said, Debbie, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's God calling me or what. I, I have to go home right now. And, and I bolted out of the room and this, it was their house is an old farmhouse like our house. Our, our house, farmhouse is 1835. And uh, we've been in the same house since 1835, six generations, by the way. And so I, you had to go from there into the kitchen. And as I opened the door, I, I took one look at Debbie's sister named Jane. And, and I said, I have to go home. And they said, why? I said, I have to go home. And I looked at Graham and I said, again, I have to go home. And I, she goes, what? And I, before they could say anything, the look on their face looking at me uh, was a fear, just plain fear, which, you, you know, added to my, <laughs> quite honestly, that added to my fear. And I was like, I could, I could feel my heart pounding, you know, and you left when you went out the door, you went straight out this door and then you had to go into another room, which was a coal room where they kept the coal back in the day. And back then they didn't have coal when I was a kid, but that was the coal room and it was dark. And you, you went out that door and you're out into their driveway. And I hit that driveway. Now I'm going to tell you, I was a really, really fast kid. I mean, I could, I, I was very fast. Uh, like I said in my autobiography, I was terrible at baseball, but I could run like the Dickens, you know. And I ran across the parking lot, their their driveway, because it was like a round like driveway like this, you know, encompass you know the an area. And as I went across, as I was approaching, which was a rock, and there's a boulder. I would say maybe three feet 
about three feet by three feet. And it was a big boulder. And what was unique about the boulder is you could stand on top of the boulder. And when we were kids, to learning how to ride a bicycle, you'd stand on the bicycle and you could just hop onto the bike and go. And we went back and forth between the two houses so much that there was a, literally a dirt path between our house and the Shaw's house. I mean, back and forth. Tommy, we need a cup of sugar. Go over to Graham's and get a cup of sugar. I mean, it was like back and forth. I mean, the two houses, you know? And when I, just as I, I hit that rock, all of a sudden, all the noises disappeared. All the September crickets, wow. August crickets, the noise just disappeared. It was gone, gone. And and also, I just felt the, just the oddest feeling. And it, something was made me look to my left. And as I looked to my left, a UFO just dropped right out of the sky. And right away, when, when that dropped, like what you're saying happened, did you immediately think that's a UFO? Or did at first, like, so what the heck? Or how did that? Well, I didn't think it was a 57 Chevy. I'll tell you that. You know? I mean, no, there was no doubt, Martin. It was no doubt about it. This thing was probably 40 feet from side to side. And, and I had such a good look at it at that moment. I, I was fortunate. I got to take in everything, you know, and. And I could see that there was like one section on the bottom was going one way. Another section was going the other where the lights were. And another section was going the opposite way. It was wow. going three. And I'm like, and I got to tell you, you know, I know you don't pay attention to other UFO stories. No, I've, no, heard, really. I've heard this. I've heard I mean, people say things exactly like that. Right. I, I mean, so, I mean, I'm just, it was so surreal, but it, you know, when something appears before you, and it's before your eyes. Trust your eyes, especially if they're like 35. This was like 35 feet above my head. This wasn't like, oh, it was 100 yards off or something. like. No. As I said in one interview, I could have pinged it with a baseball. It was so close. You know, it was, it was very close. Now, Martin, I know you're an artist and, and a very, I want to just say a very fine artist too, by the way. <laughs> and uh, the thing that really that really just caught my attention the most of anything was that the colors of this, of the lights that were going around in a circle, I had never seen those colors before. So someone, many times I've been asked, uh, describe the colors. Well, like if you're on earth and you say, what does, uh, can you describe a red fire engine? You'd say, well, it's, you know, it's candy apple red or, 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 or whatever. You, you could say it's sky blue. I never saw these colors before and haven't since. It just yeah. like I just and, mind blowing. And was and there now, a lot of a lot of different colors that, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean they're just just, 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 just going yeah. around in a circle. And on, another thing that was that was really important was that underneath on the, it was close enough that I saw that there was another bank of lights underneath it, and they were all like bright white lights. And then there was a beam, and then there was a place where a beam came out of, and the beam came on me. And it's like, and all of a sudden, it's like my hands jerk back quick. And it's like the best way to describe it, I've described it is if you went underwater and, you know, you, know, you go under and see how far down you can come, and you're coming back up, and you're like, you want that first gulp of air, and you go <gasps> like that. But this is reversed. It was like I just took my breath away for a split second, and I just like blinked. And I'm, I'm seeing images and I'm like, I mean, of course, I'm totally confused because I'm seeing images off to my right was uh, I see this girl and she had the most, when I mean the most horrible, just, just frightening look on her face. It, it was really, really, it was really upsetting to see, honestly. I mean, I just have to take a sip on that one. Yeah. And, and let's, let's just, just, let's um, just say this because someone might be a little bit lost. Uh, at this moment that the beam came down, there was, and what was her name? She was watching you out the door. Okay. So I don't know this at the time. So yeah. in the meantime, that was where I was seeing perspective. The other perspective is Jane and her grandmother, we call Graham. 
So Jane was on the phone and from Jane's perspective, she says, Graham, what's he doing? And she goes, I don't know. What is he doing, Jane? He's running in that light and he's not moving. And according to her testimony, I was running nearly five minutes in place, but I had no memory of that. Wow. I just remember like it's time. Time was, you know, the, the whole thing about time and perspective and, you know, the concept of time makes you really think what time really is. And so for me running in place for five, five minutes was like blink just really quick. So, so though I, I was taking things in and, and taking in the memory, the time was my time perspective was different from reality. What was really happening. So as Jane was seeing this, they're looking at me and I'm in a beam and she goes, we're looking at you and you're gone right in the beam, disappeared right in the beam, gone right before just, their eyes. Just like gone. a flash. Just yeah. like a flash, gone. And for them, you know, of course, for those guys, panic had set in because the grandmother said, where did he go? Where did he go? And Jane goes, I don't know. I don't know. She goes, go upstairs. L look out. See if you see him. She, goes, she runs up the stairs. She comes down. Grandma, I don't see him. And now they're panicking, but they're not running out. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going out okay you, you know it's it's like no 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 we love tommy but you know we're not going out there they're not that stupid you know not that much yeah <laughs> no, not that much i mean probably pretty close martin i gotta tell you you know so so th that's what they saw they saw me witnessed i was witnessed disappear in a ufo beam and i you know correct me if i'm wrong i know you don't pay attention to other UFO stories, but I don't believe, and I mentioned that a couple of shows ago when I was talking about you coming up on this show, I don't believe anyone else has ever witnessed that. I've never heard of anybody. Yeah. If anybody, if anybody's been witnessed disappearing in a UFO beam, uh, you, you know, please come forward. You, yeah. you know, I mean, it might be helpful, but I, I suppose I must have been about the first. I mean, I mean, you, you hear cases. I know famous cases like uh, was Barney and you know, yeah, Betty uh, and Barney, Betty and, yeah. Betty and Barney, right, yeah. right. I knew I heard about that one, you know, and I heard about Travis's, you know, that yeah. naturally because you know people talked about that when all this stuff started coming up and everything, and and uh, you know I don't really know the details of Travis's you know, case I've met Travis at, at an event and, um, uh, you know, he happened to be up in the Berkshires and I took a friend down to see him at an event that he was at because his cousin had been out in Arizona when it happened. So they talked about it and I said, well, I don't know anything about it, you know, but honestly, nope, no, yeah. no, I was, it's, it's like, but how do you, now, let me just, let me just ask you this before we move on. Did they, when you actually, Re and they actually saw you reappear too, which is really bizarre. Right. Um, we'll get and, to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the UFO yeah. There. But but let, let's let's just let me just ask you this: Is this something that they talked to you to, about afterward? Did they talk to you and say, "Hey, look, we saw you disappear"? No, no. Okay, they, All they right. didn't. They we, didn't we, talk about. It. But what yeah. was interesting was when before Graham died, she called Jane, her granddaughter, into the room, and she says. Jane, do you remember back with what happened to Tommy? And she goes, yeah, I do, Graham. And she goes, do you remember what happened? And she says, yeah, I do, Graham. Is he okay? And yeah. Jane says, yeah, he's, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Tommy's fine. Oh, and she closed her eyes. That's the last thing she talked about. She died the next day. Never oh. regained consciousness. Oh, amazing. I mean, to oh, be man. somebody's last thought that night was her last thought that she wanted to confirm amazing wow. before she died god bless her i mean really i mean yeah it, it was for me that was very touching it yeah. really was yeah yeah wow wow so uh i know i've i've sort of interrupted you a little bit here and we let's, yeah we were let's, on the ufo martin yeah let's bring it back <laughs> to your perspective again yeah uh, i know i know and and wh where did you think you were when you all of a sudden you 
Did you realize that you were inside of this thing? Yes. Instantly? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because, uh, you know, you see an object before you, and now, you, now you're in something. You know you're not on the ground. You, you know you're not on the ground. You're not, you're not in your house. You know, you, I clearly saw it. I now have an image seeing this girl on the ground to my right. And then my other, it, it was like kind of like foggy, like, you know, it was like the colors inside were grayish. That's all I can say that, you know, grayish, you know, it's like, it's like if, it's like if you went and there was like a, 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 a black and white, the, 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 your surroundings turned to black and white, but it was still color, you know, being imposed in there. And, the, and what was put in was these lights. I mean, you know, I kept seeing color lights. And wow. another thing I remember is seeing faces of other kids. And every time I did, I, I just looked down. I just, I, after seeing the one off to my right, which later on I, I identified who it was. I'd see these other, I just didn't want to look. And then I'd look, I'd see, look like a, I look like this, just like a normal human being like. And after that, I look like, like an alien, like, you know, and then, and then the next thing I was fixated on was like a table. And, and then I saw these panels and stuff and then it was out of there. Wow. Uh, do you mind if we stop here and I ask you a couple of questions? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, your other senses, you mentioned your visual senses. Mm -hmm. um, what about sound, smells, anything like that? I didn't hear any sounds. No sound. No sounds. It's no, like no people. Sounds. No. You said the horrified girls. No, no, like uh, nothing Just from them. Nothing. No. no. Yeah. No. Like the sounds were like gone. Wow. And, um, uh, and so uh, were you fearful? <laughs> <laughs> the reason I you ask know, some people, I, I'm going to tell some, you something. If some, some people say they they don't have any fear. Oh uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, Check that fear box off. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, of course I was. Anybody tell, let me tell you, anybody says they, they weren't fearful. Let me tell you, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. If a UFO drops over your head when you leave tonight and you uh, want to tell me you weren't fearful. Are you kidding me? Well, let me just, let me just tell you what I've heard. And the Some answer people say is yes. they have like a sense of calmness over them. Well, you know, that, that type of thing. The thing what what really what really where my fear came in was when i was put back down on the ground mm. and at that point i was fully conscious i wasn't in a fog and i was literally flat out when i landed and and i was like a, a, maybe a, a foot off the ground and just boop right down and i'm in a beam and I heard my brother's voice. I knew where he was. He was at our garage and he yelled, run, run. And I said, I can't. The beams hold me down. And, and at that moment, right at that moment, mental telepathy came on again and told me, just relax. We're almost done. We'll be done in a minute. And I just went, okay. There's nothing I can do. I couldn't move. I couldn't go like, hey, hey, hey. I couldn't move anything. I was just frozen right there. Done with what? <laughs> well, <laughs> Martin, if you could kindly answer that question, I, I'd, I'd love to know. <laughs> Actually, I did find out what it was, uh -huh. which we'll get into, but not quite yet. And so that they said, we're done. And when they said, we're done, the beam went off and I just rolled over, stood up looked at this ufo and it had to slowly rise no sound no sound at all and it slowly went just like up, up, gone and then it floated off to the west wow and then all of a sudden it was gone it was gone and i'm standing there and i looked at my brother and i bolted into the house and when i opened the door the only thing I remember was seeing our telephone, which hung, was in our hall right after we opened the door to go in. 
I had no memory till the next morning. I don't even know how I got to bed. Nothing, nothing. I was just, I must've gone in a state of shock. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then after that, did you talk at least, I mean, you said the neighbors didn't want to talk about it. What about your brother? The next morning, <laughs> the next morning, my brother, Bo, Bo's, Bo passed away at 39, by the way. It's really oh, sad, but that is. Uh, when the next morning I got up and I got dressed to go downstairs, get a suit, um, and he just shook his head and he went, whoa. <laughs> he, just, he just kept shaking his head and he didn't say anything. And wow. so I had my Kellogg's, Kellogg's cornflakes. Okay. <laughs> Brought to you by Kellogg's cornflakes. <laughs> I had my Kellogg's cornflakes. Great. And no, that's and then, frosted flakes. Well, that's the one I mean. The frosted. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah the frost. Oh, I'm sorry. Frosted flakes. They're great. Okay. And <laughs> so I, I had my frosted flakes and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I, I have to iron my pants. Now I'm going to tell you, we were really independent kids. We did our own ironing and everything wow and my mother came in and she goes what are you ironing your clothes for school's not till tomorrow uh just getting ready ahead of time mom you know because hmm. i had no idea i didn't even know i i just it was consciousness it was just coming back to me out of shock obviously and then every many households in south berkshire always had wsbs on okay mm -hmm. And they had this radio personality, Tom J. And Tom J. always did the news. And they always came on at 7 o'clock. Now, there are some people that said that they were on the air that night, of that night. WSBS came on at 7, was off by 5, and that was it. That was it. Now, was Tom J. at the radio station? Absolutely. Why? Because he was a ham... He was a ham operator and he was hearing hearing stuff and he went up to the radio station that's why jane green was able to go up and talk to him but they weren't on the air they weren't on the air that night they were not because fcc regulations said at a certain time they were off the air period mm -hmm. so anyway so seven o'clock rolls around tom jay comes on he goes uh, good morning. The funny thing in the news, you know, uh, people were seeing uh, UFOs over all the South Berkshires, and it wasn't swamp gas. And I'm like, what the heck is swamp gas? I mean, it just stuck with me. I'm like, what the? <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what the hell this guy's talking about. Swamp gas. And that was it. It was. I mean, it was a very sh short, to the point. People saw UFO over South Berkshires, and so you know, you're not the only ones that saw it. Great, great. I was just relieved that I wasn't the only one that saw it, you know. So we we're all like, that was thanks, thanks, uh, Tom J. You know, you just validated that other people saw a UFO. I will mark that in the book for years later when when, <laughs> when I wonder who the hell these people were, you know? Yeah. So hey. you know, you just make a mental note, even at 10 years old, you make a mental note. So yeah, so now it's September 2nd. And I'm, you know, really, I, I'm just like in a daze that day. And I remember going, I'm, can I go over to Shaw's mom and call her? And I just, I just wanted to go back to the Shaw's. I just wanted to go back and, you know, call her and stuff like that. No one was saying anything. You know, you know, what do you say to a 10 year old kid that you witnessed? He got beamed up. What do you Were say they treating you any differently? Uh, yeah. Like I was the plague. <laughs> <laughs> really no yeah. yeah i mean no one you know the, the the funny thing was we were us warner boys were very popular we really were and and all of us you know there was six warner boys and and, and we we're very well known in our town and like my brothers my older brothers they had tons of friends over all the time you know I, they're like brothers to me so many in fact uh uh even famous Kenny Aronoff, the famous drummer, was was one of my brother's friends, and he'd come by. They'd all treat us, I mean, just as kind as can be, you know. But when I became 10, 11, 12, and my brothers were getting friends coming over, no way, man. No, wow. they're friendly in school. <laughs> no one was coming over. And and I kind of accepted that, you know. So I I, I grew up with a a sense of you know, kind of a happy-go-lucky guy, but, you know, there was always that, you know, 
something always bothered me about that, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's just, it's just how it was. I accepted it around here. Now yeah. where we went on vacation, we'd go up to Lake Champlain for like seven weeks and I had my lake friends and <laughs> they, yeah. they, they'd walk, Hey Tom, you're here. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go water skiing and all that. It was a completely different story Yeah, you, around here. Yeah. yeah yes. They certain amount knew it, I think, but yeah. You know, was, yeah. One of the things, you know, getting back to when you were um, on our, the craft and you looked around and you saw, you know, these other children right off the bat, I think, well, uh, you know, they, they, it's the thing stops over, you know, between your house and the Shaw's house mm -hmm. and then picks you up and then drops you down. But those other kids were from other places. Absolutely. And, and you makes you wonder right off the bat, uh, did they ever release those other kids? Now I know, you know, that one of them, at least, you know, uh, was definitely, someone that had the encounter release because she was at our 50th uh, party here over yeah. at our house that we had yeah. for that uh i'll tell you so fast forward I, I have to tell you there's a little bit more of this story than september 1st it, it, it continued um so after that that particular day my mother my mother went over graham had called up my mother please come over i'd like to have a talk with you and so tell you you know talk about something that happened to tommy last night and so my mother went over i didn't know this jane told me years later oh wow it, th actually three years later she told three years ago she told me the story and because i was writing a book and and she you know decided she was going to talk to me about the whole thing jane held it in all those years she really did so as it was just as traumatic for her that these uh, that she witnessed this event and later she felt guilty that she didn't that she didn't tell me about it you know so she said your mother came over and she, graham says a ufo this ufo came over tommy and there was a light and a beam and he was in it and he was gone and my mother says we're not going to talk about it anymore wow that's the old Irish way, by the way. <laughs> yeah. wow. If you don't talk about it, eventually it didn't happen. Sorry, Ma. You know, it, it did happen. And and actually, Martin, it happened again two weeks later. Really? Mm -hmm. The same same type of situation? Well, this was a, this was just slightly different, okay? So naturally, I was afraid to go outside. I mean... I mean, I'm like, I can go outside. My brother says, come on, Tommy, let's go out and have a catch. It's the sun's still out. We can have it. The sun's not quite down. We can have a catch. I said, all right, I'll do this. So I get out. He says, see, nothing here. He says, <laughs> you know, all right. You know, when my brother says, oh, there's no problem. I sh that should be the first key, Martin, that something was going to happen. Okay. Because that, that's just how it was with my brother. And that's how they were. Oh, no problem here. You know, you know, lightning's going to strike, you know? So I take the ball, I throw it to my brother, comes back. I throw it at him, comes back. I throw it to him, comes back. I throw the ball. I release the ball. It goes about 15 feet, stops and comes right back over my head flying. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? And I turned around and bolted after the ball as I'm running. My other two brothers, and actually another net Jane's brother, are running the other way towards me. And uh, the brother's telling, Did you see the UFO? Did you see the UFO? It's over Tommy's head. And I'm like, Oh, not again. And then they stop and they say, Look, Tommy, it's right there. And I, and I could see it. And when I saw it, all of a sudden, mental telepathy says, You're okay. You're safe now. I'm like, And it went. And saw it one more time, and it left. I was now, was it the was, same looking thing? It looked the no, same? I couldn't see. I only saw the bright light. It wasn't close enough to get the details. You, you know, it had a glow to it. It was gone. And wow. I would say it was probably yeah, cruising altitude, probably about 45,000 miles an hour for the distance I covered. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> nothing big, no big deal. <laughs> and, and so I'm like, now I'm like, I'm like, I'm a 
I'm a wreck at this point. You know, I looked at my brother and I just bolted into the house and I don't even remember a couple days went by. I just had lost memory for like two, three days. Wow. I didn't remember the rest of the weekend or Monday. I, you know, and, um, and then I became very quiet for a while, real yeah. quiet. And then in like, I look back and I see pictures of me like grade school. I mean, I was always smiling, happy and everything. I looked at the pictures and I was like, I looked really sad. I mean, it was like pretty pathetic. Really, <laughs> You know, I'm like, Oh my God, this kid's like, you know, but you know, no one, no, there's no one to talk about it. So a short time after that, there was an orb in my room and I'm like, I was freaking out. I'm telling my brothers, there's something on the roof or something on the roof. It's got it. So I made my older brothers go out with a flashlight. There's nothing up there. Tommy, you're fine. You're fine. So I, I decided I had to, I slept with a teddy bear. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I had to find some way to go to sleep. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I was like a real life radar. You know? I'm really like, forget it, man. I, well, sleep didn't sleep didn't come to me that easy. Yeah, it still well, doesn't. Post you know? post traumatic stress. I still I, I still don't sleep well. I I, mean, I, I don't. You, you know, we got a question. Uh, I'm popping up in front of you here from Mary Grace Kirby. Uh, did you have any marks on your body? Uh, anything unusual happened while we were talking about that? But did uh, you have you ever? Um, you know, a lot of people. The talk answer about is yes. I, the, the answer is yes, Mary. I'm not going to talk about it. Period. Okay. I'm talking about. That's it. fine. But I mean, yeah. but the 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 answer is yes. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Now, what was here's what gets interesting about the second event. Now, unsolved mysteries knew about the second event, but when they told the UFO Berkshire UFO story. The reason they didn't get into the, the second event and, and other things of that night was because they wanted to tell a story how it affected a community and making the point where people just didn't talk about it. Now, someone might mention, oh, we talked about it, and it was talked about all over. Well, it wasn't talked about all over in Great Barrington. In fact, a lot of my classmates said, oh, my God, I saw you on Unsolved Mysteries. I never knew. Yeah. I said, because because we didn't talk about it. It was a, a very tight, held to the vest secret. And that circle of knowledge, who knew about it, was kept down. It was kept down. And it was kept down for a reason, you know. And... Though kids didn't really know about it, I'm sure they kind of heard about it, but because we didn't talk about it, they didn't talk back. They didn't ask questions. And because they didn't ask questions, you know, I don't know, maybe so, but my brothers, they all had friends come over. And they, you, know, you know, it's like clear, clear out the campfire time. He's about to sit down and give a, a story here. You know, it's it just, that's yeah. how it was. And, and then time went on and, you know, you know, another instance was when I really started getting tight lipped about it was when I was about 13 years old and I was at, it, it was catechism. That's Catholic kind of school after school, you know, learn your prayers, all that stuff, you know? And someone brought up was there was a priest and they said uh, he saw a UFO. And the priest looked at me, he says, you have Satan in you. Uh, yeah. And, and I was so furious. Yeah. That he would say that. That's not uncommon. That, that, that I was so yeah. angry. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you, you're raised. As, I'm, I mean, I'm a very spiritual person. I was spiritual as a child. And when he said that, it just it just affected me so much. And I just took his arm away, went around a room and left the building and walked all the way home. And it was just it was just devastating to me when he said that. Wow. Yeah. So later that year, you you know, we we went back up to Lake Champlain and and I'll tell you about this. So I'm in the water on a raft out in the water and swimming in, you know, do 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 swimming in. And uh the guy's next to me and he says, we stand up after we've been swimming in. And he goes, you know about UFOs? <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it. No way. I didn't want to talk about it. 
I said, no, nah, especially because finally I was making friends up here. <laughs> you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, okay, hey, everybody, you know, here I am. And I said, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. I said, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. I said, how would you know that? He looked at me and he says, because I was on that UFO and I remember you and your brother. Uh, but your brother was never on it. He doesn't want to talk about it. He won't talk about it. And I don't blame him. You know, I mean, he didn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to talk about it today, really. You know, he just doesn't want to talk about it. So, you know, I, I leave him out, you know. I don't give out names or anything like that. He just doesn't want to talk about it, you know. So, so geographically speaking, um, where, um, you know, you, where were the, uh, or did you ever find out where some of these other people that you actually thought you saw was there anyone else besides there was him and where did he live this guy yeah uh i believe in the albany new york area uh, albany schenectady somewhere around in there and uh, this thing was on a flight pattern i didn't ask it yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> now back to the september 1st one and this is what is not known okay so we were up on Lake Champlain, a small town called Willsboro, New York. Beautiful. Maybe I shouldn't say that because there goes the real estate. It's good. Yeah. You know? Uh, so we we always went away for like, my father worked in a paper mill and he had great benefits. He had like seven weeks off. So when we, when we hit summer, July, <laughs> that last week of June and into July, we're up to Lake Champlain. We couldn't wait. We're right on the water. It's beautiful. So anyway, so on September 1st, what I didn't know was we had left Lake Champlain, came back, and about eh, roughly two weeks later, the UFO drops over the Berkshires, right? But what I didn't know is the UFO went right up to where we were up on Lake Champlain. And it went over a family, uh, which we became friends later. You know, it was the Clark family, lovely family. And the UFO was over their son and the mother is screaming, get away from that thing. And he's, and he, you know, he's a funny kid. You know, he's like, take me, take me, take me. And his sisters are like going crazy. Get away from that thing. You know, it, it didn't take him by the way. And <laughs> he was so underneath it. The only thing he was seeing was the, the circular, the bank of lights that I described the, the bright, the bright white lights. Now his sister was seeing the lights were going around and she described them the same way that I did. And she said, and then it was gone. And just a split second, she goes, we watched it go right over the lake and a split second across the lake. The next day, remember this is 1969, mind you. In 1969, the Plattsburgh Air Force Base came down and interviewed those kids. They put them in all separate rooms, had them do drawings of what they saw, talked to each one individually, and took down their testimony. Their wow. testimony was not in Project Blue Book. Was anything in Project Blue Book regarding no. this? No. Nothing. No. Mm -hmm. And 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 I got I did get to talk to some people because you know, we were interested in possibly the, you know, why and everything and stuff, but therefore they weren't talking at that point. They weren't talking. I mean, as far as, you, you know, doing this background for this sh unsolved mystery show, they weren't, they weren't, they, they weren't giving up nothing. Okay. Hmm. I did find it. I'm going to tell you, Martin, I did find it very interesting. That, of course, they knew we were doing a show. The Air Force did know the Unsolved Mysteries was doing the show because we wrote to them. And, and the reason I, I personally know that they're doing a show is when they sent back an email. I don't know how I was on one of the lists and I got the government email. Hmm. And it came back hot. What do you mean hot? That was saying this is a hot topic. Oh. Subject, hot. And then, mm -hmm. and then the, then it went down into the letter saying, uh, 
you know, we're on, we're sorry, we don't have any records on this or we, we can't help you, but thank you for inquiring. That was a very, very polite. The air force was very polite, but so they knew unsolved mysteries was going to do a show on this. Hmm. They, they knew. And wouldn't you know that unsolved mysteries comes out and they do this incredible story and they tell about this kid that was beamed up by a UFO describing a UFO and all this stuff. And wouldn't you know, all of a sudden the government comes out and says, oh yeah, UFOs are real. Thanks. You could have done that. Like when I was 10 and admitted it, you know, not have us go through all this, our whole lives, you know, saying, well, yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, lot, that was crazy? a long time coming, long time coming. Um, just a, a question. I, I, I would like to go back um, and talk about, you mentioned what you thought might be an alien when you were on the craft. Uh, I'd like to know what that alien or whatever it was looked like. You, you know, Martin, as you know, I'm an artist now, yes. you know. And did you draw that? Yeah. Yes, I did. And okay. and and what was spectacular about this was uh, I, I drew it in our, our garage. My father had cardboard up in the garage, in the garage walls. And so I did drawings. I just did all these drawings and stuff. And about two weeks after that, my father covered up the entire wall. Wow. Really? However, I had to rebuild the wall this year. And when I took that off, I'm telling you, I, I, it startled me to see what I had drawn. Startled mm -hmm. me. I mean, and I, and I could get it off, but they're crumbly and all that stuff. But I did take pictures of it, which I'm going to put in my book, one of them in my book. And that was... Wow. And, and it was like I was drawing a uniform on one, a uniform. So I had that. Wow. I, but you remember, I just came in and I, I was just a kid and I just did what images I remembered. Boom. Yeah. All right. Do you mind describing what, what that thing looked like, that being? Or do kinda you have a like, good memory of it? Or Yeah. You know, like kind of like bigger eyes. and. Um, you know the character Yoda? <laughs> yes. Yeah. A little bit of the face of Yoda, only take Yoda and make him just slightly more human. Only mm. not the pointy ears or anything like that. Just, yeah. you, you, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, I remember I was 10. So, I mean, this is an image I took in and I, and, and the next day I, I just drew it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I would, I would draw things. And Tim is asking me a, a question. Did I feel exhausted when I hit the ground, tired, physically drained? Um, no, my adrenaline, Tim, was pumping. Wow. I was not tired at all. I was just like, you know, when that thing, when that light went off, I, I bolted. No, so I would say I wasn't tired. I went into shock, though. I definitely went into shock because once I went past where the telephone was in my, I just, that's the last image I had until the next day. And I don't even remember getting up. Wow. Wow. But but I just remember seeing our black phone in the hall, going yeah. by, running in, and just blank after yeah. that. Just blank. So and which is it's really typical of when someone goes into shock, they lose they lose that memory. Yeah. But the interesting thing about memory is this. Memory, you encode memory you, when you take in, you know, the senses you, you were describing before the, you know, did you smell anything? Did you, did you taste anything? All these are senses that you took in, but, but the one sense that, that, that I took in that is hard to describe is mental telepathy because, you, you know, it, it was just something that I had since I was a child and, it, and it's so hard to describe, but. But the the one thing that was really, you know, you know, I, as you know, I, I'm I just fin was just finishing up my my autobiography, and I talk about mental telepathy and I talk about you, you know different things and I you know I was a messenger, and you know it, I decided to get that message out and and I had no intention of getting it out and you know I was told to get it out and more mental to, uh, just mental telepathy my whole life and. 
all these examples of that this is real. This is all real. This is no, it wasn't fake. I, I'd, I'd say, okay, this is going to happen. I'd see events before they happened. And when you have your life, Martin, you can think back to when you were a child and, and, and different things, just like I can think back to that particular night. And it's like a film that plays. And we have this re ability to recall uh, knowledge and information that, that was encoded in our brain. But for me, and it's like a movie that plays, but for me, I have two movies playing. And the other movie is a, a clear vision of, uh, of another planet. And, and I, I, I struggled with that my whole life because I, I would, you know, it was like I was shown another life. Was, it, was that life put in me somehow through them? I, absolutely. Uh, you know, some people say, well, you, did you live another life or, or were you shown another life? And I, honestly, I, I couldn't tell you, but it's like I have clear vision of, of another planet very, very, very far away that's not in our galaxy. And, and, and that's the whole message of this whole thing is human for humanity to ever leave this planet and go somewhere else, they have to, you have to be in it to win it. You can't have, we can't destroy this planet, expect to get off. I mean, our great technology is, is like, and I, I said this before to you when I, when you first called it, asked me to go on the show, it's like our technology today is like driving a model T Ford and Daytona 500 and expect you're going to win the race. You're not going to win. <laughs> and we're going, eh, you know, just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Now over time, over time, we'll get there, but we're not there. We're not there. It's it's clear. A so rock when goes up, <laughs> and there's go. You know, I mean, there's <laughs> it's, it's no yeah. comparison. I mean, it's not even. You know, when we, I sat down with my son. I said, Dan, if an object goes, say one second in six miles, how fast is that? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, that's a little just under twenty two thousand miles an hour. Mm -hmm. that's cruising speed by the way <laughs> you know it's like twenty-two thousand miles an hour we don't have those things i i don't think so well i mean no, we have that capability but i'll tell you why we don't yeah. have these things and i'll tell you because common sense tells we don't have these things you know people go like oh it's government baloney you know why it's yeah. not government because they want it yeah because that's human nature my dog's bigger than your dog. My gun's bigger than your gun. You know, this started off, you know, when they discovered America, you know, the Native Americans took that, that, that bow and the guy goes, boom. Yeah. Well, um, so someone wanted to know, uh, DeLobo wanted to know if you think about this every day. I imagine you probably must. Every day? Um, you do take a break? Um. <laughs> It sneaks in a little bit here, you know. It'll sneak in at least once a day. I mean, I, it's, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't. You don't want to obsess about it. You don't want to obsess about it. But you know, some days if I talk about it a lot, you know, like tonight, I'm, I'm, I'm probably good for at least one nightmare. <laughs> you know? It's, like, uh, it's yeah. awful, you know. I yeah, mean, I, mean, I never it, even thought of that. But do you have nightmares about this? Oh God, yes, sometimes, yeah. Oh wow. Uh, we're you know, coming up. We only have a minute till we go into the break. You, here. Someone asked a question. I, I, I missed that last question. Yeah. Interesting discussion. Tom, can you give an example of an event that you saw with mental telepathy before it happened? Uh, yeah. Um, like a premonition when, type thing? Yeah. Uh, when I was 17, I knew I was in trouble and something bad was going to happen. I was, next thing I knew, um, I was in a car accident over 100 miles an hour. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> you, you, now, wait a minute. You, if I was, if I was driving a hundred miles an hour, I'd probably think something bad was going to happen. Well, I, I was sleeping at the time. I, I fell asleep in the car. I was in the, I was oh. a passenger in it and I woke up to it oh. over a hundred miles an hour, which is, it's in my book. All these examples are in my book beyond the stars, wow. which is coming out. And it's like the reason I put these things in and the reason I told these stories is to make the point of, the message, you know, so, yeah. 
Yeah. Hey, Tom, we're at the break. So, uh, so everyone hang in there. We'll be right back uh, right after these messages. And I'm going to play uh, a little clip because uh, I have uh, coming up, uh, I don't know exactly when, but coming up uh, fairly soon, uh, I will be having the, uh, the body language panel on. And they did uh, this on Jane Green, who is part of the Berkshires UFO. And uh, I'm letting it roll right now. I'm Scott Ross, I'm a body language expert and analyst. I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. Hey, Chase Hughes. I teach nonverbal communication, persuasion, influence. Hi there, I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation trainer, and resistance to interrogation trainer. I'm Lena Sisko, and I'm a former Navy Intel officer. I'm also a former Marine Corps certified interrogator. The one we're going to take a look at is named Jane Green. And she's going to talk about what happened to her in 1969. We were driving down and I saw a lot of lights. Look at all the lights. I couldn't even drive anymore because the lights were so bright. This huge object floated right there. And I couldn't see the end of it from the right or from the left. It was immense. And it was tall. But the, the bottom part, I, I, I didn't see windows. I didn't see any. And I, most of all, there was no noise. There was no motor, there was nothing, it just was there. And these lights were coming in and I, and I just looked at it and within a period of seconds, it lifted up, went this way, lifted up again and went over the mountain. This will be a rare occasion for people to hear me say, this is a 90 plus truth person to me. I'm going 100%, 100%. Okay. Yeah. Lena, what about you? Yeah, I have no worries saying 100% because when she uses the pronouns this and it, it's only because today she's still unclear of what she saw. She knows what she saw, but she doesn't know what it is. We go with 98.641 for this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going 99%. There's that 1%, one, 1%, not that she's lying, but some might be askew in there from, from what you remember. She may have embellished a little bit. But the loping we see in there when she's just telling that story, just riding it along, I, I'm going to say, I think this woman saw this. I think she saw a UFO. I think she saw exactly what she's explaining to us. It's real. It's for real. People have got to understand that. So that panel, uh, um, not Lena, but uh, the four gentlemen there are coming up. Uh, should be, I don't know, uh, they were supposed to be on the, the 25th, I think it was, but uh they had to, one person wouldn't be there and they want to have all four of them on. They're going to be on, and they've actually talked uh, quite a bit about a number of people talking about experiences, um, UFO experiences, but uh, of course, a lot of others. You can see their channel um, on YouTube and some of the ones, some of the shows they do have, you know, hundreds of thousands of views um, and it's the body language panel. So uh, check that out and hang on. All right, we're back, and uh, that was Tom, uh, that was a very good uh, thing you showed there by Jane Green. She yeah. is, I have to tell you, she's the most elegant human being you're ever going to meet. She seemed like a very fine lady. Yes, and Jane is actually my neighbor, just like whoop straight down here. And back in the day, you could, from where I'm sitting, I could see the Greens' house. From where I am, and oh, wow. and in fact, when we were kids, we were almost always we almost always missed the bus, and we'd look and we'd go, "Bus is over, bus just came over the bridge," and that meant it was, and it had to stop at the greens, you know. So you, you knew you had to haul to get to the bus out the door. But the funny thing about Jane was. She saw the UFO as she was coming back from Stockbridge, Massachusetts, which, you know, that's Stockbridge was made famous by Norman Rockwell, the artist and everything. Yeah. And so she was coming back with her friend and her kids were home. 
so she saw the UFO and her kids saw the UFO that night and the kids didn't tell the mother and the mother didn't tell the children because both of them didn't want to frighten each other. Yeah. They didn't. And Jane goes, we didn't talk about it. And, and when this was all filming, it was interesting because I had heard that she was going to be in the program. They said certain people that they're filming. And, and I said, so I saw her son and at that point, he still didn't know that this was happening. I looked at him. I said, did you have a UFO experience, you know, with your mother? He goes, no, we saw it. He says, why? What do you mean about my mother? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, whoops, you know? Yeah. Wow. And she didn't, she didn't tell them and they didn't tell her and they didn't talk about it. And what's amazing is then, you know, here we are here, you know, her two kids get on the bus and the bus comes up, picks the Warner kids up. And we didn't talk about it either. Oh, amazing. And wow. we, you know, so when you're around your friends, uh, when you're around your friends, you, uh, it, it, it came up, but you had that, you had to really gain my trust for me to tell you the story. I, you, you really had yeah. to be, so you had a question come in or it yeah. says, uh, do yeah. you, do you ever feel, do you like feel a victim? Yeah. I feel like I'm a shark that's been tagged. <laughs> you know, do uh, I feel like I'm a victim? Uh -huh. No, because you know, there's a responsibility that comes with this, Martin. It, it, it's not, I had no intention of ever, ever telling my story. I didn't, you know, I, some guy talked me to do in a documentary. He was out of, I believe out of Harvard and it was a senior project. I agreed, you know, and that documentary just disappeared off the internet. And I, I just didn't want to do it. And because there was some other people, one particular person that was really pushing it. And I, I backed him, you know, and I was on new England legends and then I got asked it. And then I, the phone rings and it's, I says, is this Tom Warner? I said, depends. He says, is this Tom Warner that saw the UFO? I said, now it really depends. <laughs> I said, who am I speaking to? This is Adam Riley, WGBH out of Boston. I, I, I was told that you're the guy to interview. It's always, you're the guy to interview. And, and I'd always, I tell the story, but I didn't want to get in. I just wasn't ready to open up completely about it. Mm -hmm. And I was at that point, I was already writing, starting to write my book because I just wanted the story down, you know, to, to tell, you know, you see this shelf in back of me, you know, over on this side is things that were written by my great grandfather in history books. And, and, and so I wanted to record this because I thought it was important to record it. And so I started writing the story. And then I came home and my daughter said, Dad, Unsolved Mysteries called you. You know, and, and my daughter was like, she was like a big Robert Stack fan. And, <laughs> and she goes, You gotta call him. I said, oh, yeah, All right, I'll get it. No, you gotta call him now. <laughs> it's like, and, and I talked to the woman and I still wasn't convinced to do it. And we talk more and more because I explained to her that I did an interview with WGBH out of Boston. They put the program on and, and then I see the program was picked up by one of these UFO programs and then they edited it and they said it was about this other fellow. And then he had, he, he we were witnesses. Baloney capital B baloney. I didn't see any, I didn't, you know, I wasn't a witness for Jane green. Yeah. I wasn't a witness for anybody. Jane Shaw happened to be my witness because she happened to see me, you know, I mean, she saw me physically disappear in a UFO beam. Okay. So was I a confirmation for the others? Absolutely. And we we're a confirmation for each other that this happened. So the story the real story of the Berkshire UFO wasn't about who was inducted into history of the United States, because quite frankly, we all are in the Great Barrington Historical Society. We're all in there. I went in at the same time other people went in there. Everybody's in there. You can call them up and check the records and ask for the records. We're all in there because everybody had their own experience. 
And on that film of Unsolved Mysteries, everybody did a great job. Everyone did. They told their story of what they ha happened to them that night. And mine is my story. It, it's, it's what happened to me. But mine got <laughs> repeated two weeks later. It's like crazy. But my whole life was like that. I, I, every time I think I've hit the biz, absolute bizarre, bizarre, it goes up a notch. And it's like I've seen it all. I, I, I've seen it all. And I've talked about it all. And I've talked to some very powerful people about it, too. And All right. Let me ask you this, Tom, because, you know, there are, and I'm sure you, um, I, I totally believe your story. And uh, I, I believe what you're saying is the truth. And, um, you know, there are some people that are watching this live uh, that do not believe your story at all. They think it's BS. And so how it's do great. you feel when, when that, I mean, I know you can't change anyone's mind. Um, and I will suggest to those people that are like bowing out and saying, uh, <laughs> call, calling BS, you know, watch that episode. If you really have any interest at all in it and, um, I believe these people are, are telling the truth and what happened myself. Well, well I'll I put it this way. You have to ask yourself, why <laughs> Why would I want to, you, you know, I've been in the same house, my family, since 1835. Why would I want to tell a story to get ridiculed? Yeah. I, I mean, really. I, I mean, when I did this story, I was told, look, when wherever you go, people are going to recognize you. And I'm like, Ah, you know, it's baloney, you know, everywhere. When I go in a grocery store, at least five people look at me or wave to me or ask me, you know, questions about it. it it's it's like everywhere I go, I, a car gets out and, and they had North Carolina plates and the woman's tapping her husband, pointing at me and I'm walking by their car and she's, they're waving to me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I go into a restaurant, you, you know, I went into a deli and a kid's sitting there and, and he's just kind of tapping his mother's hands and everything, just being kind of funny. And I said, ah, hey, hey, buddy, how old are you? And, and he says, 10. I said, I thought so. And I looked at my friend. I said, hey, he's 10, you know, because that was a reference. Uh, hey, Tommy was 10 when he got abducted, you know. And the little kid looks at me. He goes, we watched you when we were on vacation. He knew who I was yeah. with a mask on, you know, the COVID mask and everything. They still <laughs> know who that guy is. You know, it's like, I yeah. said, oh, he says, he was like thrilled. You know, the mother was like, we just, did, we didn't know if we should say anything to you or everything. I said, no, no, it's, it's okay. Yeah. You can talk, you know, I'm just, I'm just an average guy. That's it. Yeah. Who happened the, to be the ridicule, by UFO? Yeah. The ridicule factor is, is, is strong and it keeps a lot of people from, from talking about, well, uh, you know, their experiences. And I, I believe, let me just ask you this. Would you have not, if this episode didn't happen, if Netflix didn't pick this up and, and do what I think was an incredible job with everyone, um, would you feel so free to talk about it? I would, but you wouldn't have called me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I know mean, about on, this. You. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's just yeah. the point. Netflix, yeah. they felt once they learned, like we go back when they interviewed. So, you know, Terry Muir and Muir Productions comes, they fly out from Los Angeles, her and Bob Weiss, executive producer of, of, of the show. And um, along with Levy, who was uh, scarier things. I was sorry. I don't know this program. Yeah. That's terrible. But anyway, so they come to our house and, you know, there, there were some people who backed out of, of filming, you know, I'm not going to mention names or anything, but you, you know, they had some really, they, all they went all all the way through the interviewing process and they're coming out and three of them backed out the day they're flying out from los angeles and they're like yeah. is there anyone else do, do you know anyone else will, will willing to talk and i said well i i think melanie would probably step in for her brother and which she was more you, you know melanie was like so brave and everything i mean she really I mean, she really went through a lot. She went through pain. It was very painful for mem her memories of everything, you know, really bothered her. And, and the other guy, you know, he was, a he was a Vietnam vet and it bothered him so much. You know, he just, Tommy, I told you, I didn't want to talk. I, I'm a private kind of guy. Click. I'm like, Oh, great. You know? Hmm. And then later on, he apologized to me and everything. You know, I said, no, 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 no it's, it's okay. It's okay. 
you know, you, you don't have to apologize. But when they came out here, so they they were talking about at that particular time, they they were just kind of getting a feel of the the whole the whole story. So we we talked about the September first incident, and also we talked about the second incident because my brother had seen it and he was willing to test that he was willing to say, yeah, I saw this, you know? And so it came time. We we're talking about the September 1st incident and, and we we're sitting in this, our, our Warner Homestead library here where I'm sitting and, and, and it was time for Jane to tell her story. And Jane, when he, when it came time, when Jane says, and he, he was gone, Bob goes, what, what do you mean? He was gone. He disappeared in the beam. Bob says, we got a story here. And, and then it was, you know, just prepping for the whole show. And, you know, there, you know, there was, there was talk about, oh, the police were covering it up. Well, actually there was going to be a police officer on the show, but he, his memory was of the second incident. So that's why he didn't get on the, he didn't, you know, they, they didn't put that in, but. And but, what do you think the lack of the lack of um, all the the reports? You know, there wasn't a lot of well, reports. I yeah. you know it's it's interesting because um, after this had filmed, I my phone rang. <laughs> I go, uh oh, you know, and a guy says, "Is this Tom Warner?" It always makes me nervous when some I pick up my phone. Is this Tom Warner? Oh God, here we go again. You know. And he says, before I start, he says, I'm a 30-year veteran of Vermont State Police. And when I mean this guy was a veteran, this guy was up there in the Vermont State Police, and he has been retired. And he was, he says, I have to tell you my story. He says, I watched, I watched your program. He says, and my, well, actually, my wife watched it first. And, and she came down. She goes, honey, we got to watch. You have to watch this program, Unsolved Mysteries, the next night. You have to. So the next night they watch it. And he says, I'm just watching. And he says, whoa, this is really fascinating. He says, when it came time when my painting was shown on the TV, he says, I, I got chills. I, I sat straight up. And I said to my wife, that's it. My painting was exactly what he saw. And he was located on the North shore of Long Island and a UFO went right over their heads, approximate same height that I had seen it. And they watched it go right over to Long Island sound heading straight from Massachusetts. And this was September 1st, September 1st, 69. Yeah. And his father was a state, his father was chief of police. So when the father got home, they asked, was there any calls? They said, we got a lot of calls of a UFO. So we're actually checking to see if they go back into those records. So I asked him, I said, you know, in our, in our, in our town, I said, the record, there, there wasn't anything. He says, let me tell you, I, back in the day, unless it was something like somebody got shot or murdered, they didn't want to write anything in. He says, hmm. today, if, if Mrs. Smith is throwing an apple at a squirrel, we have to write it in. But back then they didn't. So there was strong, very strong criticism of our police department, which really, really upset me. And I'll tell you why. Because I went to school with a chief. I played baseball with a chief. The guy's the most straight shooter I've, I've seen, you know. So I was asked personally to see if we could get the page scanned, okay, the pages of that night. And we had no idea what was going to be in there, but we wanted to have them scanned. So I went and I talked to the chief. I said, chief, can we, can we possibly scan him? He says, well, this is, you know, these are police records and everything. And <laughs> he's retired. So I can say this. You know? mm -hmm. And, and he says, yeah, he says, when are you going to have these back? And I said, I will return them either at the end of the day or first thing in the morning, whatever you, you wish to happen. He says, you can just bring them back the next morning. So I went over and we brought them over to this place. Nancy scans over in Chatham, New York, and we scanned them. And it was just the two pages. But there was some notes written on the back. But you couldn't hmm. really tell what they were or, or it didn't say it wasn't nothing like UFO or something like that. But there were some numbers written down kind of frantically like and 
We don't know who they were. One looked like it could have been one of my neighbors, but hard to say, hard to yeah. say. But, you know, other than that, there wasn't anything. And, you know, Tom J did really say that next morning that was on our radio station and, and they were the voice of um, the news, local news. So it's not like it, nothing was reported. Now, what was really interesting, Martin, was uh, I think it was, 1989. I say, how do you remember that? It's because that was the, that was the year my daughter was born. You know, uh, dads yeah. remember these kind of things. You know, they're supposed to. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to. You better anyway. <laughs> and and they were all of a sudden WSBS was having a UFO talk program. Like, oh my god, this is great. You know, I just I stopped working and was going to listen to the program. And. I still didn't have the courage to call it in, you know, but there was sure. an ex, they had an expert on and they were doing like, you know, call in and you'd be put on the program and everything. So finally I'm like, okay, come on, Tommy, you got to do this. So I, I call in and the woman says, I'm, I'm really sorry, but you, you know, that was the last call. And she goes, Oh, she goes, where do you live? I said, Seekonk road. And she goes, you're one of the Warner boys, aren't you? I said, well, yeah. She goes, we saw the UFO over your house. Huh. Well, well, speaking of that, so this thing airs on Netflix. It's still being watched heavily right now, all over the world, basically. All over the world. Yeah. Uh, what about people coming forward afterward that never talked about it before? Is that happening? Uh, yes. And I got to tell you, you know, the strongest compliment you can ever receive, Martin, is when you've helped somebody. It's not about fame or anything. L look, I've been named to American Grout, uh, Gallery of Greatest American Painters. I've received awards for art, literature, and poetry. The greatest gift you can ever do is if you save somebody's life by your actions. And actions could be, you, you know, saving somebody from drowning or pulling them from a burning car. Some of these things I've done. But my words and my actions by coming forward, I get a call from a young fella and he said, could you call me? And my son said to me, are you sure you want to call all these people? I said, yeah, that's, that's my responsibility. That's my responsibility. You know? And, and I call up this young fella and I read him the intro to my book and we talk. And after we talked about an hour, he said, and I told him how I, 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 I had a, a talk to this years ago when I was 16. I talked to a fighter pilot, had a lock on on a UFO. And this young fella, after I talked to him, he says, I have to tell you, he says, you saved my life. He says, because no one would listen to me. No one believed me. And I had a similar experience as, as you did. And and he really went into, you know, his parents split up and, you know, he went to live with his mother. He went on his own at 16. He had, you know, all kinds of problems. And, and, and he went down a, you know, a very lonely road. And, and he says, because of the program that you put on and that you went on Netflix and on Unsolved Mystery, because of my voice and what I told and why I came forward and that I bothered to call him. He says, you saved my life. And, and there can't be a better compliment than that. You, you're not going to get better compliment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't care how many people ridicule me. I don't, I really give a damn really. I mean, because I have a purpose of doing this. It's not to be the most known ufo guy honestly i'd rather be known as the best damn artist you've ever seen you know i mean i i, I mean i stopped i i had i have three poetry books that were supposed to come out i canceled them all and i put it aside to do this because i felt it was so important that i that i tell this story because i was seeing that people were really hurting because of this and 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 it's time for this to come forward. And it's time, you, you know, you, you don't advance by keeping secrets. You don't. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's get, let's uh, talk about the fighter pilot. Uh, oh, the fighter pilot. Yeah. So keep in mind, I'm 16 years old and there was somebody that I confided in, you know, uh, you know, because we, some of us at the lake, we talked a little bit, you know, 
And um, I went over his house and he motioned me over. I said, yeah, what's up? And he says, you need to go down on the beach. I said, why? He says, you need to talk to my friend. He's coming down. He says, and? He said, UFO. That's all he said. I said, okay. I, I understood what he was saying. And so I went down to the, this beach and I, I saw the guy and he was in, you know, khakis, whatever, you know, and a shirt. And I went down and I said, uh, he says, are you Tommy? I said, yeah. He says, uh, do you believe in UFOs? I said, yeah. He says, why? And I told him my story. And I said, um, why do you ask? Because I want him to talk, right? He says, well, he says, I was a fighter pilot. A damn good one, he says. And there was a scramble on the East Coast, and he went up on a scramble. A scramble means that there's incoming in, coming into the United States. And back then, Plattsburgh Air Force Base was the largest SAC base on the East Coast. They protected the, the coast from the Canadian border north about halfway, and then Florida, they come up the other coast. And, and then from Florida over, they go that way, and up, and you get the picture, right? So he was he was at cruising altitude and he, he says uh, it was on radar and it was coming up on him and he says it just was just floating in front of me he says it was a ufo and he says i have it i have the object on on i says i have it in front of me he says i have lock on he says permission to fire he says, permission granted and he says and mental telepathy it was communicating through mental telepathy and because i told him that I had mental telepathy, he was able to tell me that this thing he was using mental telepathy to him not to pull that trigger. And, and he says, just before I was about to push the button, gone. And he says, like a tremendous, he says, it's gone. And they were all called back and he gets back to the base and they're going to have a debriefing. And in the debriefing, he's waiting, 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 waiting. And this is a story he's telling me. And he, and, and two guys came in in suits and they put down a paper. He goes, what's this? He says, this, your, this is your, you just sign it and you're out of here. I said, what is it? He said, you want to read it? Read it. And it wasn't the truth. And he says, I can't sign this because it's not the truth. He says, I, I have to tell what the truth is. He says, no, you don't. I, said, I, I do. And he says, and he says, look, you have two choices. You walk out that door, you sign it, or you walk out the door. You walk out the door, you're not coming back. And he walked out that door and the next day he went to come back and, and the guys at the, you know, they have a guard shack, you know, and they're, they're all armed and everything, you know, you don't want to try to sneak on the Plattsburgh air force base back then. And, and he, and he said, the guy, what do you mean? I need my ID. You know who the hell I am. He says, let me see your ID. He goes, no, nah, I don't recognize this gone. What do you mean? Gone. Huh. Guns gone. You're gone. And he was so distraught, he called his friend, and, and his friend said, come on down. There's someone I'd like you to talk to. And so we had a long talk. You, you know, It was a real heart-to-heart -heart talk. And, and he gave me a hug, and he says, you saved my life. I said, how did I save your life? He says, because I was contemplating suicide. Peace. And, and, and that's the thing that annoys the hell out of me. Because what? Because we can't tell the truth? We're not supposed to tell the truth? I, I had to keep this thing a secret. I had a lot of secrets that I had to keep, which yeah. by the way, in my book, I'm not telling the secrets are out. That's it. Yeah. C'est la vie. That's it. You know, they're gone. I'm telling, I, I said, no, nope, I'm telling it all. Everything. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's uh, unfortunately, um, you know, for years and decades and decades, there's been ridicule. There's been people, you know, afraid mm -hmm. uh, to talk about things because, because it is so bizarre, you know, I mean, the story is, this is such a bizarre story. Um, I, I can almost say this because I had a really weird experience happen to me once. I don't know if it was a ghost or whatever it was, but, um, if someone else told me the story, I'd have to think twice whether I was going to believe them or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, it <laughs> you happened know, to that, you, right. so you tell your truth, you, you know, because it, because it happened. But you, I, I get when people can't like can't wrap their mind around something. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm compelled to tell the truth. I'll tell you what. 
because when I was in that car accident I told about, yeah. I was trapped in a car and I got out. I was, the car was on fire. Jeez. And you know, you go through this. I went through all the stages of dying, all of them, including leaving my body because my body was about to burn alive. You, you're willing to make a deal as they say, <laughs> you know, I'm laughing, but you're willing to make a deal. And I, I made a promise that if I got out of here and, and I said, God, if you let me live, every word that comes out of me will be the truth. And so, <laughs> sorry, I can't lie. Can't, you know, you want to know the story? I'll tell you the story. You believe it? You know, that's your problem. You know, really, I could care less. Really? Yeah. You know, what do I care if someone believes me or not? I, I know what the hell happened to me and it was yeah. witnessed. Right. Uh, well, we're taking calls now. The If you're over on Facebook or KGRA radio, that number is 855-472-5483. Write it down. 855-472-5483. We already have someone calling from California. Uh, Russell, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martin. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. You have a question for Tom tonight. Yes, sir. And I don't mean any disrespect or anything like that, because this is pretty much a universal thing that I see with all of these UFO documentaries or whatever you want to call them. And I'm not saying I believe or disbelieve, but I would like to hear more of more character witnesses from people who know the individuals involved. Like in the episode, they were like character witnesses for each other of all of them that were involved. But, you know, like people that knew Tom growing up, uh, you know, hey, what kind of guy was he like? Or the other, there was a lady, you know, the one with the blue eyes, you know, hey, what was she like growing up? Are these people reliable? That sort of thing. So again, no disrespect. It's just a curiosity I have. Thank you. Well, I mean, that's that's a perfectly legitimate thing to wonder. I mean, uh, what am I like? Um, uh, besides an artist, I was, uh, you know, involved in civil rights. I mean, I was named James Weldon Johnson, advancing the legacy for arts and literature because uh, I was my main cause was was my neighbor's property that was one of the top 10 African-American sites in the United States. And I was compelled to try to save it. So, I mean, my works in um, Emory university in Atlanta and the James Weldon Johnson Institute and also at Fisk. And, you know, uh, I'm sure if you saw friends and everything that you met friends, you know, I'm sure some people would say I was a jerk. <laughs> I'm joking. No, but no, seriously. I'm, I mean, uh, what you're like as a character, you know, uh, you know, it's like, he doesn't know me from Adam. He doesn't, you know, but you know, I'm sure if he came to see me, I mean, if some of these people, you know, maybe read my book, <laughs> you know, beyond the stars and then make a, make a judgment after that. Because in that book, I also, I, I also have proof. I have proof. Yeah. yeah so, no, I, I so, but but I, as far as a character is considered, you you know, it's like someone said, you know, it would be like saying, uh, you know, uh, one person would say say about my brother. Don't get me wrong, I love my brother. <laughs> he's my brother, you know. But one person would say, oh, he's the greatest guy ever. And next person would say, is that scumbag your brother? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, opinions like everybody's got him. <laughs> you, you know. I mean, but. You know, I have no reason not to believe Jane Green. Why? I mean, I mean that she was, you, you know, she happens to be one of the most respected people in our town, and um, you know, I have, I mean, I, I, no reason to question her. You, you, you know, I'm my family's been in this house since 1835 when they had our, our bicentennial. My grandfather let off the parade. I, I mean, we've been here for for a long, long time. In fact, this house is listed in historic houses and institutions in New England. And so right, you know, thank you for your time. And I did enjoy the episode. I thought it was pretty good. That scared is me. Uh, it scared me and I was in it. <laughs> it, it, 
Yeah, thank yeah. you for calling. Right. Hey, thank you very much. Thank okay, you. Have a nice day. Okay, bye bye. Uh, lines are open. So if anyone wants to call in, I have this question that popped up. Um, do you have an understanding of why you were abducted? Yes. I was, you, you know, I think I was, you, you know, it took me a long time, but, you know, it was to deliver a message. And I'm, I'm delivering that in my book. And, 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 you know, I only did this to help people. That's it. You know, that's all you can do in life. You, you know, it's the same reason I do art, the same reason I write poetry. If I can help somebody, that's how I live my life. That's it. You know, I, I, I really believe in, in good karma. You know, I really yeah. believe in that. You know, you really have to be what comes around goes around. I always say, you know, and if, if you're, if you're good to other people, things can happen to you or your children or whatever, you know, and that's just how I look at that. Yeah. Uh, we have another call and uh, this is Ray and he's calling from Vancouver, British Columbia. Ray, welcome to the show. Hi. Uh, Hello, Ray. Hi. Hi, Martin. Hi. Oh, this, hi. this is Tom Warner talking. Hi. How are you, Martin? How are you? <laughs> Oh, n not too bad. I'm, I've kind of delay here. Oh, you got a bit of delay there. Uh, you have a question for our guest? Uh, yes, I do. Go right ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, this is a totally different question uh, in regard to the movie and uh, the UFO topic, but um, I'm thinking... Uh, do you um, do you uh, do you um, know any significance uh, significance of the numbers one 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 through uh, you know your experience? Uh, well, did you catch that the significance? Yeah, yeah, of the significance 11, of one 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 one. I guess that's a binary code that, that, you know, that's a reference to a binary code. I, I, I really couldn't tell you. Um, I'll hang up to, uh, for your answer. Thank you. Anyway, right. uh, not really. I, I mean, I, I don't know what it, it, I'm sure I had one, one dream where, where someone said to me, I'm M I eight. Just tell them I'm MI8. <laughs> I have no uh, idea. Uh, wow. it, you know, I have I have no idea. And 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 it was a a re something that was you know like embedded in me. And I'm like, am I eight? I you know, you know, I, I had no idea. What was interesting was on this drawing that I did, I had I had drawn symbols. And I had I had drawn numbers. I have no idea what they mean, really. I mean, I couldn't tell you, but I did draw numbers. I don't know what that meant. I have no idea. Wow! And you just did this freely, like you you just the next probably the next day or two days after that. But two week definitely after the second UFO thing, my father covered up the whole wall. Wow, that's that's an interesting thing all by itself. Yeah. We have another call. We have Gil calling from Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> hey, Gail, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, Martin, how you doing? Hi, Tom. Hey, how you doing? Got a question hey, for our guest? Absolutely, I got a couple. Um, Fire uh, away. Outside from a, a, a terrible windstorm down here in Roswell, but anyway, dust storm. Oh, Tom, I was going to ask you. Now, has this, I, I missed part of the show, but... Have you continued having having abductions throughout your life? You look about my age. I'm about 57. <laughs> um, I thought you were going to say you look 46. But <laughs> no, um, you I, I've had some of those bizarre incidences that that will be re known and recorded. I I I'd say I've seen it all. Yeah. I, I mean, I've really had some really yeah. bizarre instances. And if you're like, a, I, I'm, I've had the same thing sort of. So throughout my life, Oh, um, 
it's it's hard to i mean they kind of from like ghost spirits to um right to a ufo sighting do you, do you know when do you know why that is i'll i'll tell you why that is is because your senses are, are so in tune to other things because I know people that have had UFO experiences, they have a tendency that if there's a ghost around, <laughs> you know, you have an extra um, ability that most people don't have. And, and some people who've had these experiences have some pretty bizarre, right. uh, bizarre talents, as they might say, you know, it's like, yeah. You know, well, I had another question for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, did it ever take a break? Because, I mean, with me and my experiences and my father's and my mother's and my brother's, right. um, I, I, it took a, a long break, but the last 11 years has been like crazy. I agree with you. I agree with you. And there was, there was a period where uh, I was – all of a sudden, the whole thing started picking up again in pace. And every time I'm like, no, 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 no. It's like, yes, 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 yes. You know, I mean, and these things, I write about them in my book. You you, you got to read the book because, I I mean, I, I don't want to give away everything, you know, that, that's in the book. Absolutely. But I, I just have to say that you're right. And one of the reasons I, I wrote this book was because the pace kept going faster. Everything kept going faster. Right. And I'm like, I, right. I, I have to tell this story. I ha I felt the word would be, I felt compelled to tell this story. And, you know, every time oh. I say, no, 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 no. And all of a sudden these things would happen and I'd get this mental telepathy. You need to tell the story. So here I am. All right. Right. Well, we appreciate your story, and uh, I've seen it on Unsolved Mysteries and all that. So I got to get your book, of course. Uh, thanks, and thank you for you know, thank you for watching the program and everything. It's uh, you know, we watch. I got to tell you a real quick story. We watched the program the next night, and we put it on the barn, which is now a barn. We're in the spot where the thing actually dropped me off. And we put Unsolved Mysteries on, and we had big speakers outside, dark at night. Uh, it scared the daylights out of me. <laughs> I'm like, why am I being scared? I was, they're, they're, I'm looking at myself being scared. I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, they did a good job because they scared me, too, after watching it. But it's a uh, – it, Yeah, it, absolutely. It was, it was – I, I got chills just like I did that night. You know, anybody says they don't – that's not yeah. going to frighten them. Baloney. Baloney. Let me tell you. I'll tell you. That's what nightmares are made of. Yeah. Really. Right. 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 I know the same feeling, brother. <laughs> yeah. You want to. You want to be scared. Let me tell you. A bear will scare you. A shark will scare you. A UFO dropping over your head is gonna. You know. It, it's gonna make you like. You know. I mean, yeah. that really does. Yeah. All right, Gil. Thanks for the call. And another call a question you. coming in. Thank yeah, you, we have a question here. Uh, now, I do want to talk about the, you've mentioned telepathy quite a bit here, so I do want to talk about that. But was there more telepathic information besides it's okay? Um, so that's the question up there. Yes, my whole life. And, and I, I would like for you to, you know, um, uh, you know, how do you explain the telepathy or what you think is telepathy? Compared to, you know, we all have thoughts pop into our heads, stuff like that. Um, what's different about it to, for in your mind? You got to think of it this way, Martin. You know, we tag sharks, you know, and, and you can tell the shark that the shark's coming up the West Coast or wherever it's, you know, where it's coming. And they can tra track it. I'm, I'm tracked, you know, and it has an ability to communicate. I can't help it. You know, it's like. As crazy as it sounds to people, I can be communicated to. Does it happen every minute? No, of course it doesn't. Time to time, yeah. And and how, I mean, is it, um, you know, one of the things that people do talk a lot about that have these experiences is, and I think you sort of hinted at it, was uh, uh, we have to take care of our planet. Oh, is, absolutely. Is that is that something that pops in? Absolutely. 
that's <laughs> and and what type of form do, how does that happen what type of form sorry yeah how how does it explain like how that happens is it is it a continual thing continual theme continual theme all the time and know? details you know uh pollution no, the, the, it, what, that we're destroying this planet we're not going to get off unless we change our ways that's you know i mean that's the basic i mean but you know I, and and for me to deliver that message would is is to tell my story and to give the examples how i came up with that and why i came to that conclusion and what that conclusion was and and some of it's pretty bizarre yeah yeah the line i'll just say again the lines are open and uh, that number is 855-472-5483 you got a putty cat Putty cat it's, on camera. Yeah, she's gonna claw me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what about the rest of your family? How? Um, you, you know, I know you have a family now, uh, and they all accept this. Okay, is that? Are is you, that are you talking thing? about my wife and, and, and kids of that? Yeah, yeah. Let's oh, yeah. just say. Well, yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, um, my daughter didn't. You know, she didn't really want to go on TV about it. You know, because she's a pretty. They're. You know, they're both pretty private and everything. Uh, but they've had their own experiences. And um, I, I was very, very pleased that one of the experiences, um, <laughs> anyway, she never comes up and I get on TV and she wants to come on the TV, little thing. And um, I was with my son and we, we got to see a UFO. It wasn't up close, but it was definitely a UFO. And I just had a feeling we were going to see something this particular night. And, and, and so it went across the sky and I thought it was a shooting star at first. I just went whoop and it stopped and then it shot right up. Yeah. And he looks at me and goes, dad, did you see that? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> I got clawed. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's interesting. So, um, so is, would you consider that area you're in? Kind of like a hot spot. I mean, a lot of things going on there. Well, you know, since it was on, uh, since it was on Netflix and it went on, I've had. Well, what happened was we had a class reunion, and oh my good lord, see, this is the cat Chase. She's terrible. For the go. people listening on audio, he's got a cat problem. <laughs> <laughs> got a cat. The cat never comes up on me. I should have had. I think the new thing is I'm going to have treats, and every time the cats. This this has been happening like uh, the last two interviews. The cats, I start talking about UFOs, and the cats they never come up at my lap. I start talking about UFOs. They want to. They want to. I think they want to listen in. Anyway, what was your question? Sorry. Instead of men in black, they're cats in black. They're cats, black cats. This is yeah. the men in black. It's really a cat, you know. Yeah. Now, what was your question? I'm sorry, Martin. <laughs> what was our uh, last question? Yeah. What asking? was the last? Oh, God, I did this again. I get carried away and and uh, try to think of the next question and forget my last one. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry about that. Remembering, uh, you know, I I have we, were we talking about messaging and 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 humanity? Yeah, uh, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. And you know, that's um, how to distinguish between you know thoughts in your own head and you know and what was what was actually being said to me. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are. It's, it's like. You just know. I mean, it, it's like, it's it's like it's not like I'm thinking of something. It's like something's telling me something. Yeah, it, it's it's complete, and it can be something so random. You know, I mean, it's like it started when I was a little kid. You know, and and if you don't, you know, for for me, oh, I know. Yeah. It, it was like, yeah, how does this get me to believe what's happening is real, and it would be events. Yeah. And we were talking actually about your family and, and how, they yeah, we were. Oh yeah. We're talking in, yeah. and, and, and yeah. you know, and, and so you pretty much covered it. Yeah, yeah, we did, you know, and my wife's very supportive of it too. You know, she's that's like, good. You're that's helping important. people when yeah. she sees that, you know, like the other, that young fellow that said, you saved, you saved my life. It was all yeah. worth it right there. Really? Yeah. 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 If you can do that just once, it's uh, a lot of the pain is worth it. Yeah, right. and a lot of people are coming in. So we got another call, come, another question coming in. Would you yeah, say from Brett? Would you say the experience? Oh my God! Your yeah, Brett. Creativity? This, this, this is the this is the thing that that 
I don't understand. And Martin, you're you're an artist. You could you could understand. You know, I one of the things in my art is that I paint consciously and subconsciously. Uh, consciously meaning like I'm trying to you know paint a certain thing in there. That's consciously. Subconsciously is when I'm thinking about it, and I have no idea, and I'm just like putting the sky or something, and what I'm thinking of appears in that, and it can be a face in there. Now I'm sorry, no, no offense, Mark, I'm not that good of an artist to do that. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah. It's just in my subconscious, and, and it's it's an ability that was put in me, and I don't know how it is. Like in this particular painting, uh, the the UFO painting I did from my it's beyond the stars it's the same the painting's the same title as my book and i was thinking 1969 and i blocked out and i wanted to get the sky just like i remembered it that night and when i was done i look up and the number 69 is in the is in the sky i and this is after the painting was finished i was like i don't know i don't know how it got in there and how did the face in the sky get in the painting and how did in the beam, if you look down, there's a, an alien reaching down. I, I, you know, I, I have no idea. It's subconscious, you know, and and it's not the only painting that I, I've done that with, but, but uh, yeah, there's that was a talent that was put in me, and you know, and it definitely had to do with that those experiences. i just, just mind boggling, mind boggling things that I've been able to do that that make no sense. But I know that. Yeah, just, I'm really looking forward to seeing those pictures you did. You know, a couple of days after. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it, that's you know, fascinating. Yeah, the the one was like, you know, it was like, I, I I'll send you the one. <laughs> My, it's like, geez, did you did you create Yoda's face there? <laughs> Better <laughs> what? You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. And uh, Yoda wasn't even thought of. Nine, at that time. 1969 it wasn't no yeah. no yeah. no but you know it's interesting in a lot of these um uh you, you know a lot of these sci-fi movies and stuff well let me tell you they get the ideas from somewhere yeah yeah there's there's people that argue at that and say that uh we get the ideas from the sci-fi you know that's uh, nah, nah, yeah. nah it's opposite really people you know tell someone about something and go hey that's a great idea you know yeah you yeah. know for sure Right. Right. Well, wow. um, you know, you, you mentioned your book a number of times and I know mm. you're, uh, how can someone keep an eye on that when that's, uh, when that's <laughs> going to be coming out and all that? Well, if, if you're on Facebook, you can look up beyond the stars or if you're on Facebook, you can go look up Tom Warner. Uh, and I'm going to be, it, it'll come out in the next month. Yeah. Within a month, you should be able to go to your bookstore and say, Hey, I'd like to order beyond the stars and you'll be able to order it. Yeah. And, so, um, and, and, and I, and I will, once I get the links, I'll put them up, I'll give you the links so you can put those links up for people. And, 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 and I, I really appreciate you, you know, having me on Martin. I really appreciate the, the time that to talk to, you know, your, your fans out there. Yeah. You know, and I hope that if there's, you know, if, if you're out there and you've had an experience and you need to talk to somebody and and you get a hold of Martin, Martin, you can give him my information, how to reach me. I'd be glad to talk to anybody really. Yeah, that's great. And, um, so let's see, uh, I'm just trying to think if there's one more thing I was looking in the chat to see if there's any other questions. Um, because I really uh, appreciate this and I hope, uh, I hope things go well, uh, in the future for you. And someone asked us, is there, do you ever hear a message in music? That's kind of an interesting thing. No, not really. Yeah. Y you know, I, I, I have certain things, um, certain characters that I've known. It seems like it was in a past life, you know, Yeah. on another planet. I mean, I mean, it's, it's bizarre. I mean, it really, it's, it's, it's bizarre to me and I, and I'm living it. So for someone, or, you know, the best is go ahead, read the book, you know, judge from there, you know. Yeah. And can you just one, one more thing I wanted to say, because someone asked this earlier. Yeah. What, what is the area that encompasses um, where this event, you know, really focused Distant, on? This, 
Well, There's Great you know, Barrington, it, Vermont. As you know, it, yeah. it, as you know that it happened. I mean, Great down, Barrington, Mass. Right, yeah. Great Barrington, Mass. It, it happened down in Sheffield. It was it was seen in Long Island, and then it was seen up in the Berkshires, and also Lake Champlain region, up in on uh, probably opposite of say Burlington, Vermont, that that general area that was seen. But there was a lot of concentrate. The thing why they did that here was it was concentrated right here, and. There have been a number of sightings here. In fact, I, I saw in our UFO report in 2017 and 18 at Simon's Rock, which is a half mile from here. In fact, one girl saw a UFO, had a mark on her neck, and lost time. Uh, and that was 2018. Yeah. A half mile from here. Half mile. Do you know? How about that? Well, yeah. you know, the, the last final question I, I have to ask you, and um, I wondered if you ever contemplated doing uh, regression hypnotherapy. <laughs> it's funny you should say that because my brother, he would say, Tommy, 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 you, you got to go under hypnosis. You, 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 it's going to be amazing what you remember. And, I'm, and I said, no way. And I'll tell you why. I remember enough. Yeah. I remember enough. I've been shown enough. You know, how, much, how much shock do you want to give me? You, you yeah. know? <laughs> what happens if my shock is they put me out and they did a little little tiny surgery on me? Do I want to watch yeah. that? Yeah, I wouldn't even want to watch my own doctor as a human being being a you know okay who would you want that now? Yeah. You know, and I yeah. take ribbon. You you know I I've heard every probing joke that there is. Oh yeah, you know, from my brothers. You know, and they yeah. joke about. But you know, that's not yeah. what this is about. This is about trauma, and people have trauma from this. Yeah. And and they don't know what to do because it's so it's so out of this world. And and the first thing they do is is re religion will say ah it's Satan, and then the government will say hey, you, you know you lost your mind or something. You know, yeah. no, no, yeah. It, it's real. And and I was talked to somebody whose father was involved in a particular program, and he sat as children down and i'm not going to get into much detail about it because that's a private matter but he said ufos are real uh, men in black is real alien human hybrids are real this is all real and it's real and he had a position yes where, he did yeah i can't say yeah and, and and i've in my book i talk about someone who i was actually given a note by a human alien hybrid and it was revealed six years later what the note meant. And that's in my book too. And, and I had his note, what his drawing of what he saw that he was protecting. And it was about a six to seven foot tall, gray alien. And what the person that was in the room with him was saying was the same thing that was written on my note. Wow. So, hey Tom, we got to cut it short. So we do. Thank you very you much. Know, Martin, it's, it's like, we just, we, we just were getting warmed up, buddy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I just want to say thank you and, and, and you know, and everyone came to your and it's, it's been, it's been a, it was a fun time talking with you, but you, you really yeah. touched on some real serious issues. And I, and I hope that it, I don't, like I said, the only reason I did all this was to help other people. And if you're out there and you really need to talk to somebody, you can find me and I'll gladly, I'll, I'll return your call. I promise. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. All and, right. And, and good night. Good, good night now. All right, everyone. So uh, keep in mind, next week, uh, we are going to be on Sunday night uh, and 7 to 9. That's Eastern Standard Time. And that will be with Paul Dean from Australia. So that's it for the show tonight. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening and watching. And uh, remember to keep your eyes to the sky. Mm -hmm.